All right. Hello, everybody. Glad to have you guys here. And uh, we have a very special topic today that I think a lot of us could use. It's the it's about the path that self-forgiveness will give us in order to heal ourselves. It's all about self-forgiveness, which is basically rooted in self-love. Right, Eric? And we have the wonderful Michelle Gray here. And Helena Nimick is going to be here in a minute. Technical problems. Uh, and welcome to both of you guys. And welcome. I love you, Eric. Eric says, I love you, Mom. And he's just, he's laughing because I always have technical problems. And poor Helena, oh, she's she, she's having a problem getting on Zoom. Okay. Uh, well, okay. we'll figure it out. Okay. So maybe I should send her the invite again. Yeah, maybe send it again. Invite. Click on Helena Nimick. Click on invite. And uh, oopsie. I don't know. Hmm. Okay. I don't know what's going on here. Oh, yeah. No. Maybe I should also. Oh, there she is. Yes. Good. There so Helena Nimick is. All right. Now we are ready for prime time, people. Yes. All right. So uh, we've got uh, Michelle Gray and Helena Nimick and Eric Medhus. And all of their information is going to be in the description box of the YouTube that this will eventually become. So, Eric, can you guys hear me okay? I can hear you. Yeah. yeah. Oh, good. Okay. Good. Eric, my okay. love, is going to talk about self forgiveness and healing. This yes. is going to be Eric's birthday soon. This is always an awful time of year. His birthday. I'm not yeah. here watching him blow out the candles. His death day, his burial day. I just hate it. Ugh. Yeah. But anyway, yeah. it's what it is. Um. Yeah. So. Eric, hi, I love you, and happy birthday in advance. Thank you, Mama. I love you. Hmm. And he's just saying he's still blowing out those candles with you, Mama. I'm just waiting to give you your birthday spankings, that's all. When I get up there, you're gonna, <laughs> I've accumulated a lot for you. He just he bent, he just he bent over. A lot. <laughs> bent over, yeah, really. All right, Eric. Yeah, he says he deserves a lot of spankings. <laughs> <laughs> Eric. Like, look, I mean, self-forgiveness. So many mm -hmm. people have self-loathing and therefore cannot forgive themselves. And I'm sure it's inner child work that needs to be done, et cetera. And I'm sure some of it is probably rooted in other lives. But can you, I mean, you had the mic. You had the floor. Go for it. I'm going to well, open the floor because those dogs are driving me crazy. They want to come in. Okay. You you go ahead, Helena. You could talk, and your hair yeah. looks gorgeous. I know the listeners can't see your hair, but wow, baby, your hair looks good. Okay. Oh, it is beautiful, right? Yes, it's gorgeous. Well, they will see on the YouTube. Yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, Eric saying like when we were talking about forgiveness because this has been a conversation that we've had for a little bit now as um, as I'm struggling with it myself and. Uh, Things that I thought I had forgiven come back up again. And I'm like, wow, I thought I had forgiven that. Uh, so he was explaining to me that it is definitely in layers. It's not just a one size fits all where I forgive myself and that's it. Check uh, off the yeah. list. No. <laughs> yes, yeah. yes. So he, he's saying that those triggers come up because there's more inner work to be done and to be able to go inside with compassion for yourself is extremely difficult when you're um in self-loathing mode yeah uh what he has always said to me and what is my staple as far as forgiveness goes is truly that we all do the best we can with what we know at the time. It's fine to sit back in hindsight and say, I, sh I could have done better, I should have done better, but that's hindsight. None of us can act above our conscious awareness at the time. Yeah. 
So a lot of that he's saying right now, surrender and acceptance. Um, surrendering to, you know, um, to your soul's journey. The, those detours maybe that you feel that you, you took were purposeful and necessary. You don't see the big picture, but you're, it's your soul that's growing and learning and also teaching. Um, you're teaching other people as well, you know, while you're um, making the choices that you've made and doing things that maybe, you, you know, you think you like, I thought I could never forgive myself for, you know. Um, so. OK, Eric. So. Mm -hmm. um, so the soul contract, the soul purpose. I mean, we might be doing things that, oh my God, I've done awful. I need to find a way to forgive myself. But truly, they are, you know, if you look at the 30,000 foot perspective, are so valuable to us, but perhaps even others. The things we do that we think we need to forgive, and, you know, we can, mm -hmm. sometimes can change other people's lives and our yes. people's lessons. Yes. Well, that's, that's certainly, he's saying like, that's certainly how it was in my case. Um, the, uh, the things that the hardest thing that I had to forgive myself for was my act of addiction and what I did, what it did to my family and my children, especially my children. And I never thought that I could get to a point where I could forgive myself for that. I look at, and Eric's saying, look at your children now. They are awesome, compassionate, beautiful human beings, you know. So it, it was purposeful. Yeah. He's also saying that they did choose you for a mother before they came on. And this was soul contracted to uh, to go through those things. Um, and really, like, well, it set me over the edge was the car accident that that really changed all our lives. You know, uh, that's when I became addicted to the opiates. And, yeah. you know, I, I couldn't seem to pull myself back in from that. But Eric's saying, too, that if you keep the same mindset and perspective, your future will become your past. Because if you sit in those emotions of guilt and shame yeah. that energy that's what you're going to create so there won't be a difference there like it's almost like i look at it where it would have been for nothing you know if um if i carried that guilt and shame yeah with me but it is layers and and that's okay too because it's it's the bits that we can handle at the time yeah, you no. have to digest it little by little. Peel, yes. eat, clear off the onion yes. at a time. It's like yes. with the main service skater work, we release trapped emotions really slowly. You can't release them all at yes. once. Yes. Yes. Uh, it would be awful. too much. Yes, yeah. it would be too much. So what is the primary... Well, first of all, what percentage of people, Eric, have some self-loathing? and need to find a way to forgive themselves. I don't know what you're getting, Michelle, but I'm getting like 90, 95% of people. Okay. Like it, it's a lot. There's an awful something. lot of it. Eric says it's yeah. like a, a spectrum. It's like a spectrum of self-loathing because he says mm -hmm. all people, you're, if you're human, mm -hmm. you're holding Make it. Mistakes. If you have an ego, you have it. Yes. So he says how much you hold on to, because it's not about the whatever caused it. It's about how you feel. What is the volume you're holding on to? And so he says that's a spectrum, but everybody has some or has been through some. Yes. Yes. Yeah. I mean, I it, in the morning, I was ruminate over all the things I've done wrong. And it's very difficult. I used to do that at night, Lisa. I would lie in bed at night and go over basically, and this is probably why I can never slept, um, going over every um, yeah. yeah, every every wrongdoing, every self-loathing thought, 
And that also contributed to the addiction, the mental health. Like I had to, it was an escape. I, I could not handle it all, you know? And as you, as you forgive yourself and forgive others, because I have done a lot of forgiving of others and I know that it's for me. Yeah. It doesn't like, it doesn't, I don't have to vocally say it to them. I just send that energy to them. Thank you for playing that role that I needed you to, to show me and to teach me. Because unfortunately pain, not unfortunately, it's, it's, it's the way it is. Pain is a great teacher, you know, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. it, it, it drives us. No pain, no gain, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Ugh. All right. So why do people loathe themselves? I mean, if we could get into also other lives that can cause this, et cetera. Because a lot of people is like, I don't know why mm -hmm. I hate myself. Is, is there something in another life that's contributing to this? Yeah. Can you speak to that? Y yes. I mean, that, that can be a, a huge part of it. Mm -hmm. And not just like one lifetime carried over lifetimes. Yeah. And I I used to say um, I must have been a terrible person in a past life to have brought about all this abuse in this life. I must have been a terrible person. And Michelle, it was Michelle talking to me one day and she flipped it for me and uh, said that how me healing others in other lifetimes I had that I had attached their pain onto myself and I was carrying the weight of that on myself. Yeah. So it's like we we allow energy to, you know, attach on and that we carry forward into lifetimes as well. So that's, that's a, when that's a big one. one. Mm -hmm. That's a big one because Eric says that acceptance, because it's the acceptance of taking something on. So he says in past lives, like that can be exactly what you just said. You're taking on other people's pain, whether you're doing that consciously or not. But he also says, um, like acceptance in this lifetime as well. Mm -hmm. He says that there are things that we take on without realizing that we're doing it even the things that we're trying to help other people with, he says we can so unconsciously take on their problems. And he says, then we don't really understand why we feel the way that we do. And he says, many people that are empathic and very sensitive have this issue. You know, very often light that. workers. Yes. You know? Yes. Yes. Very much so. The That's, ones that uh, shouldn't be hampered by this are the ones that are hampered by it. It's a shame. Here is one of my favorite quotes by mark twain mm -hmm. forgiveness is a fragrance fragrance the violet sheds on the heel that has crushed it mm. that's beautiful yeah that is that is that is beautiful. that touches right in the heart yeah yeah yeah. 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 It does. yeah oh lisa mm -hmm. no it's just very poignant so yes. How can we do inner work? Yeah. What can we do? Do we go to a healer that does that? I mean, how can we help ourselves? Yeah, well, in different ways. I mean, if you want to work with with a healer, um, we can certainly pull out like when it, when I do chakra work and that I pull a lot out of the solar plexus that is just useless energy. It's just stagnant. It's there, and it needs to, there. They're clinging on to it like it's got claw marks on it. So pulling that out and, and getting that energy moving again. And Eric's saying, like, asking your team, asking your guides and your angels to help you go in with compassion, not criticizing yourself. Go with the heart, not, not the ego, um, because the ego likes to keep us in that mindset that yeah. mind belief that um so That's it's really, really yeah. yeah yeah um eric's also saying work like working with other people like um service work volunteering especially oh, if, yeah. it's, if it's within a um something that is healing for you um depending on what the subject matter is uh he says there's a lot of things that we can do 
to volunteer that helps us. Yeah. And he goes, and this is where, um, you know, law of attraction and uh, yeah. our guides help bring people mm -hmm. into our life to help us mirror what we need to see. And he goes, and this is awareness too. So, you know, sometimes we need a little assistance with that awareness, but if we can accept within ourselves that there's something there that we are holding on to, he says, being compassionate is saying, I don't need to let go of this all at once. I don't right. need to fix this overnight, right. but right. what can I do today to help this feel better? And, and he says, helping other people is a way to help open that up and feel better. That's how I heal. I mean, yeah. that's why I started yeah. healing Eric because I needed yeah. a way to heal myself. And the only way I knew is to heal others. Yes. And it's almost like we hold on to the self-hatred to punish ourselves. Is that part of it, Eric? Eric's saying that we get familiar with those feelings and fear of the unknown can be greater than the fear of the known. Yeah. So even though they're not they're, it's not good to sit on it eric's just saying sometimes it's more comfortable to sit in our shit just um, did he <laughs> just showed That's me good. a big pile of shit and said <laughs> we get comfortable sitting in our shit yeah yeah, yeah. and you know, sometimes uh, it's yeah. part of our ident we identify with yeah. it yeah well it's like who would we be if if we weren't that victim anymore or we weren't that you know um that person that just couldn't stand like it's it's self-sabotaging it's holding the only one standing in our way is, is us really and like uh, most of us do require help with this like we do it's it's not something that is easily done on your own but and what eric was saying there about volunteering and stuff he says you find yourself in service to others through service to others you can find yourself you know, and that's your like your true heart. Um, He's also and, saying uh, judgment mm -hmm. too. Like um, we hold on to it or hold on to these feelings because it, there's like this subconscious. You know, if I let go of this, then I'm saying that this was okay. I'm oh. saying that what happened is okay. And he says, and also the judgment of other people. If I start living my life where I'm happy and okay other people are going to punish me for being happy. So I need to punish myself. Mm -hmm. I need to keep punish. So it's a lot of these, he says, conversations that we don't even break it down as a conversation. We just do it. We just do it yeah. because really what we're doing is deflecting pain. Yeah. Well, I, I added so much to the, I always add to the skater script, uh, scripts, but one is like, I talked to the higher self to relinquish mm -hmm. the mentality of victimhood and self-loathing mm -hmm. and, and, and the fact that we are we've become comfortable and we yeah. got comfort in our illness or our mental affliction or yes. our emotional yeah. whatever. and also just now started talking to each person's inner child forget yeah. yourself you're loved you're a whole and part of god etc i just started that today so yeah. And that's a really good one. Uh, Michelle and I did a meditation uh, for your inner child. And it was really profound. Like it was like the tears. I couldn't stop the tears. Oh. And and the love that I felt for that little human being that just didn't know, didn't know any better, <laughs> you know, didn't know, um, didn't have a voice, you know, and just like letting her know that you're okay, you're safe now. And I'm going to carry you with me in my heart, and you're always going to be safe. You know, um, because that's I, where a lot of it comes from. I, on, on that note, I want to share, um, a, you know, a friend of mine. It's can't get on the radio show because she's in the UK, but she had a terrible life with a biological mother that was awful. I mean, she watched as her daughter was raped. She just did, did nothing. So, and so Jita Michelle, I don't know her last name. I, I won't give her last name. Is mm -hmm. trying to figure out, you know, she has such self loathing. She does not know how to forgive herself. And, uh, you know, she wants to know what's the soul agreement here. And, and, and we can speak to 
the general listeners as to this too. So the answer can help more than just Gita. What Eric's telling me is that um, those really painful abuses um, that people go through and, and experience they are like, and this is this is challenging for us to understand as well, right? But they are the paved stones that lead us back to self love. Yeah. That the shadow work and the inner work that we do, and it it does lead back to self love. That's what this our our purpose is, <laughs> you know, in these lifetimes, is to bring us back to self love and that. That love of sources, love, and that support, like we're so supported and trusting that, you know, um, that is an absolute horrible betrayal and abuse that she went through. And I, I can't even imagine um, it would take a lot of healing work to for her to, you know, come to terms with that because her mother completely betrayed her too and didn't protect her. And, mm -hmm when when you feel like your own mother doesn't love you um who else is going to love inner you inner child you can't know? love themselves yeah, yeah. i mean right. my mother so, inner child says it's supposed to love me she doesn't so i can't yeah. love myself yeah so, and nobody i'm not worth contract? loving is that a soul contract she had with her biological yeah mother? oh definitely something that traumatic yes yeah eric saying yes why what was the agreement what was the lesson to be learned maybe just just self forgiveness or that's a, a huge part of it yeah. her soul came to experience that depth of pain but it's also the the people around her and she's going to be able to carry that experience and really help others and that's going to help her too this being able to help others it's also, um, Eric says that in this lifetime for her, it, this is a completion. So there are um, like more than one person involved in her life and through that situation that came together to, uh, it's like this lifetime, we're going to get through this. Right. And so she right. is like this star because she's this light, Eric, showing me that's mm. plowing through and the sole lesson is patience and plowing through this with patience mm -hmm. and compassion for herself. But this is completion, meaning working through this and healing this is opening up a huge door for her in this lifetime yeah. for opportunity. Yeah. And uh, there's a lot of growth. This lifetime has a lot of growth for her. Yeah. So Eric says often, you know, when we come in with these, really painful experiences and when we can work through and get to the other side and alchemize transmute that energy yeah. he says we have big gifts on the other side of it yeah. and th those gifts spread and share out to the world he says that's a part of humanity it's a humanity project that they're connecting right. through that through and the helping groups. the rest of the collective or at least a major part of it yes yeah yeah um he was just saying something to me there about um, we we don't feel it, but uh, a lot of the time, these are highly evolved souls that are going through this. Yeah. Um, and some souls do incarnate to help others around them. That's their their soul contract, right. you know. I'm not saying that's the case. He's not saying that's the case with this one, but but some of the the more painful and, and trauma ones can be like they're such highly evolved loving souls that they're willing to incarnate and go through something like that to be able to teach and help the people around them and the mass consciousness, right? Mm, yes. Anything else about self-forgiveness and the path to healing, Eric, before we take callers? Eric's saying not to he doesn't want this to come across as like a pressure oh I have to forgive myself to get to this point oh, you know yeah. it's it's everyone in their own divine timing and it's 
it's as much as they can handle and when they can handle it. So he doesn't want people to feel like that's something I have to attain to. I got a deadline you know. next Friday. Yeah, I better yes, fully yes, absorb all my yes. sins. Yes, exactly, exactly. Yeah, yeah. He's actually laughing. Oh, I shouldn't say maybe, but he's actually laughing about. It's not where you go into the confession booth and come out and you're all hunky dory. I know. know. Oh. (laughs) Yeah. Okay. You want to take callers, Eric? Yes. (laughs) All right. By the way, I, a dear friend, Stephanie Lawrence. I think she's okay with me giving the. Lola, her little dog, just died. And I, I, I did a scalar service to help the transition. I do this for free for any human or animal companion to help them transition. I go through some frequencies and whatever. So can we have a message from Lola yet or not for Stephanie Lawrence? I mean, she, she got to where she couldn't use her back legs. She was in pain, you know, 14 years old, I think. What I'm getting is that she is so grateful for the life that she had and the love that she was given. She's not in pain anymore. She's free. And with any clients that I've done with their pet crossing and that, it's the same as like Eric or my brother and that. They don't leave us. (laughs) They're still with us. You know, um, and <clears throat> and they can be involved in a new puppy coming around too, or a new dog being brought on. But it was it was time. It was her time, mm-hmm. and they have nothing to feel guilty or sorry for. Um, she's just saying that uh, <laughs> she's so grateful for the love. You know, it, nice. the love that they gave her and the life that they gave her. She was very, li- like, very blessed. Oh. And wa- watch for your lamp flickering because oh. she's, she's a little oh, communicator. Boy. So watch for your lamp <laughs> flickering for a little, a little love from Lola. Awesome. <laughs> All right. Let's take uh, the a person from the 832 area code. Hi there. How you doing? What can we do? For, what's your first name and last initial? If possible. And how can we help you? Hello? Hi, there you are. <laughs> yes, ma'am. I'm sorry. It's my first time using this and I was at the anointing. Uh could you were really, uh listening or calling me. Uh, anyway, um I say hello to Michelle, who I met before and um Eric, and Elisa, thank you for taking my call. Can you tell Eric? Can you? He probably knows it, but can you tell Eric your first name and last initial and where you're calling from? Yeah, my, yes, my name is Consuelo Davis. My um, and I live in Houston, Texas. Oh, no, Houstonian. Um, yes, I live here. And how can we help? How can Eric help you, sweetheart? Okay, I I have a uh, another business that I just moved um, many years ago. Um, I cancer in my throat, so uh, oh. I think some kind of uh, a wheel pin in my tongue thigh, and I found a little broke inside the skin. So there's my inside leg. In, in your inner inner thigh, right? Yes. Okay. And, uh, I, I don't know if I to do. I thought I was going to paint. Well, what does the growth and, feel like, uh, Connie? Consuelo? Is it so hard as a rock, or is it rubbery, or is it, you know, soft? What does it feel like? I can't, I touch it, and I move the brown side because the, the flesh there doesn't have any fat anymore. So, but I, uh, but I think it's solid. I had a, but is it hard like a rock? Uh, is it hard like a rock? Or your tip of your nose? I would say so. No? And, uh, yeah, I think so. And I had a vocal sound and they saw it and everything, but they didn't know what it was. So now I'm going through that waiting of I got the blood out, but I only had appointment for the um biopsy on the October 11th. So that makes me nervous. 
Yeah, <laughs> it's a long time to wait, but it's it's okay. Eric, does she need to be concerned? I, I'm getting. I, Michelle, I don't know what you're getting, but I'm getting a no. I, that, it could I'm be getting like, like a cyst, a cyst, a cyst or something. Yeah, yeah, that's what I got. Was like a cyst. I, but I, yeah. Michelle, are you? Lipoma. Lipoma. Lipoma, super oh, common okay. in the thighs. Lipoma, something like that. Yes. Um, I have to tell you, you have quite a grouping of angels around you. Oh, because, oh, they are all the way around you. Um, I call it like a rainbow because oh. I can see all the different colors and they are all the way around from one side to another. And you... <laughs> in prayer, in prayer. So whatever you're doing in prayers, the angels hear you. They carry your oh, prayers. That's wonderful. All right, Consuelo, thank you. And, and let us, let us know what the biopsy results are. Oh, no, okay, no, I, I, we have to go on to the next caller. I'm so sorry. Uh, you guys, there's only one, one question per caller. We've got so many people on the line. I'm sorry, Connie. Yeah. Call next week, okay? Or we have the YouTube Live Thursday, okay? All right. Thank you. Sorry, I feel so bad about that. But a lot of people just want to ask like 10 questions and, you know, it's hard to say no, God. All right, we got somebody from the 321 area code. Hi there, how you doing? Finally, thank you. <laughs> I thank you for taking my call. Sure. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Um, hi, Michelle. Hi, Eric. Hi. Uh, the new, the new speaker. Hello. Helena. 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 What is her name? Nice to meet you, Helena. 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 With an H. Helena. Okay, Helena. No. Uh, H. Nice to meet you, Helena. <laughs> Go it ahead. Doesn't matter. Helena. Yes. Okay. Yes. <laughs> okay sorry. Um, I had gotten a, the mini mediumship done back in 2022, in April 2022. And, like, other than the side effects that you say that goes with it, you know, the runs or whatever after, that part went through. But then I don't, I don't know what I'm missing out on. Like, I'm not feeling, you know. When was it done I'm again? Like really feeling. Shut up. I'm sorry, my sister's laughing at me. <laughs> um, it was April 2022. Oh, wow. Well, we've added a lot of... Have you had the main service, and I too? Got the chakra um, healing, too. But did you get the... the chakra overhaul. Did you get the main service? I, I Yeah, I started out with the main service. How long ago was that? I think I've had... I want to say I've had two, um, like... Um, when you, you know, it's been like a year, so then I get kind of like a yeah. a redo type thing. Yeah, you, like two of those. Yeah, you, well, you probably if it's probably need a tune up, but I don't know. Is are there blocks? Yeah, yeah. Are there? Are, does she have blocks? Helena, Eric, I'm. I got blocks right away. That it is there, um, but there there's blocks of energy that are um, stopping the the flow. Of getting through to, you know, where she's feeling a difference or, you know, but it is there and, and it is still doing something, you know, but it's the blocks that are stopping. Yeah. A lot of times you guys, when you, when you read their energy, you and, and Michelle mm -hmm. see the scalar instructions right oh, at yes. the auric field yeah. mm -hmm. trying to penetrate yeah. and, and enter, yeah. but you know, if there's blocks. The, the third eye, so her third eye is swirling. And so um, what Eric is saying is that, um, so you have abilities right now that um, he says, like you're looking for certain things and there's already abilities that are there. And he says, if you work on, on the abilities that you have, and let me just ask you, because he says you have a really good shit detector. That's what he's ah! saying. Like, well, shit detector, yes. Yes, like you, yeah. you know, you know when somebody's got some bullshit. <laughs> awesome. He's, right. he's just saying that. Um, okay, so now, to, um, like unblock it. Well, what he's saying is focus on because you're getting a lot of information through your solar plexus area. 
uh, like so through the gut and he says like the third eye in your gut is connected oh okay so he says practice pr practice with the um like with your knowing and he says speak to us because eric's with you and so you asked mm -hmm. eric to be a guide or because eric's eric's one of your guys he's like i'm on board oh and wow so if speak wow. to eric and pay attention to what you're getting as a knowing through your body because what's going to start to happen if you haven't already had little bits of this already is you're going to start to get visuals and visuals as in like little flashes, little images in your oh. head. So it'll feel almost like a daydream, just like when you're thinking about something and the thought passes through. Mm. Eric says, just pay attention to what's coming in because here's the thing. He says, once you start to notice how you're already communicating, other things are going to just pop up because I'll tell you, your third eye is swirling. And when your third eye is swirling, that is just a matter of time because it is all there. Mm. Okay. Awesome. All right. Well, just keep practicing, too. Okay. Keep okay. practicing. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you bet. Ladies. I hope your daughter is doing Thank you. Oh, my Thank goodness. Thank you. Okay. Uh, uh, all on that thought, Wayne Rigdon, he's, I think, in the UK. Um, he had the main service back in July and hasn't really felt the effect. Now, you know, these, these things are super rare. They almost always, people feel it immediately. So what's going on yeah. with him? Is it a block with him, too? Wayne Rigdon. Michelle, I'm getting that there's not a full trust there in himself or in in. No, oh, like it's basically going to be in, true, or yeah, I'm yeah, not worthy yeah. of feeling better, things like that. Yeah, or um, and people's expectations too, you know, um. If if they put ex, like exact expectations on how they're going to feel and what it's going to do, and it comes in differently, they're blocked to it. Yeah, expectations you is know? super dense yeah, energy. Yeah. It's yeah. so hard to yeah. penetrate. It's not gone yeah. though. It's not gone. Oh so no, because <laughs> I can see two sides, like on two sides. But what's holding it in place? Is, is exactly what Helena was saying. And, and Eric also is just saying there's some fear of certain things happening. And, and not to say this is conscious because he's saying this is like, um, I don't want this to happen, but I want this to happen. Yeah. Right. Says, so the, right. the best practice would be to practice being present and allowing whatever comes up and say to yourself, this is, this is happening for the best this is happening yes. to bring me closer yeah. to what it is that i want regardless good. eric says whether you want to judge that as good or bad he says allow things to happen because it's it's penetrating so it's yeah. like doing this yeah. like little flex with you right now <laughs> that's awesome you know um i forgot what i was gonna say i just blew it out of my mind that's, that's uh, a michelle thing <laughs> no, it's a Helena thing. <laughs> yeah, it's a hell, it's hell getting old thing. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. I know. What I mean. You know, there's so many good video testimonials and written testimonials that ins are very inspiring. Yes. And I'm wondering if, if when people watch these, if they can knock out that block of Yes, it's going to be true and stuff. Yes, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, Eric says that that is the beauty about all of this in our journey. We we have the ability. We don't have to. If it's not in our soul contract that we have to experience something a certain yeah. way, we can experience it through other people. We can gain okay. knowledge, and he says, and we can refine our own journey by taking the lessons and the information from other people and applying yeah. it to ourselves. So he's like. Like, fighting. absolutely, Mom. Okay. Absolutely. Okay, let's take somebody from the 907 area code. Hi there, how you doing? Hello, everybody. I'm so grateful to be here with all of you. My name is Tara. Hi, Tara. I'm calling from Alaska. Hello. Hello. Oh. I want to say hello. <laughs> <laughs> I really want to say thank you for <laughs> Sharing tonight, it's really touching my heart and my spirit. But my, my, uh, oh my god, hi Eric, 
um, what I would like to ask is my mom and my father just passed um, this year and mm. I just wanted to say hello to them and I've been thinking of them and I'm loving them and um, I just wanted to pass on that they hear you mom dad what are the first names? Maybe we can get a message for you, Tara. Uh, B and Rick. What's it? What's the mom's name? B. B. B and Rich. Either of them come forward and give a message. Were you looking at Were you looking at birthday cards, Tara, or uh, uh, like a recent or one of the last cards that you were given? From my mom. Or, or do you have one? Because they're showing like, um, I'm not sure if it's your mom or dad showing it to me. It could be them collectively together. But I'm seeing like a card with like the signatures, like love you. You know, yeah. like a, like a so. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> so what is, what is, what are they trying to say? Well, they're sending you a card right now. Oh. Is there, oh, wow. they're letting, letting you know that they love you. And it's like, it's almost like a, we're here. We're here. Yeah. Love yeah. you. We're here. Yeah. We're good. We're here. Like a postcard. Yeah. I just got that postcard. <laughs> oh, wow. A postcard. Yeah. yeah. Postcard cool. from heaven. Yeah. Yeah. All right, Tara. Thank you for heaven. calling in, sweetheart. Thank you. Thank you. I'm sending love, Tara. Thank you. Lots of love. All right. I have somebody from the 262 area code. Hi there. How you doing? Hi. I'm Michelle. I'm Michelle from Wisconsin. Wisconsin, hi. I sent, I sent you an email about my granddaughter. I don't know if you remember or not. I, and I want to see what service I get for her. She's um, scared of everything, you know, and um, there's a lot of stuff going on with the family and mm -hmm. stuff, you know, she's a black piece of the family and oh. all this stuff. And my thing and my problem is um, after um, my husband passed, because I had her since she's been a baby because my daughter was addicted to pills. Oh, yeah. So I took care of her for seven years. And she's 10 years old now and she went home after my husband passed and she does not like it. Oh. They're not mean to her, but they don't show her like they still have the other kids. And she's so scared of everything. And I know my daughter... No wonder. She doesn't dad. feel supported. Yeah. And I get her every weekend, every time that she's off of school, I get her. She's always with me. She wants to live with me, everything. Now, my thing is, I had um, services done with you before. And I think I put her down with me. And she's always here. Now, um, I wrote or I asked Eric a question about her. And he said something to give her the protection that the first one or whatever. Now, I don't know what house to do it. Do I do it at her house? Or my house. Oh, that's a tough for one. her. Where is she most of the time? She's well, she well now school starts, so she's at home now. Well, that's she's probably the best. I mean, I, Eric, you can confirm, but she, the rest of the household that's unsupportive, also needs because we do everybody in the household for the same price. So right. I think that. Okay. Maybe everybody in that household needs to be treated in order to help her, not only just her, but every life form that lives under that roof. Eric? Right. Well, Eric's just saying that um, there are no limits to when you're protecting a child. He's repeating that again. Um, a child's safety and security, because as we're talking about forgiveness in the inner child, this is what is cr creates it, is this situation right here. Yes. You know? Um, so preventative is always best. So yeah, I, I would definitely recommend that. And you're right. It, it has to involve everybody. It, it, it won't jive together if it's just, you know, her, it has to be the household, you know, yeah, didn't cost the extra. Like, I mean, why not? Yeah. 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 I'm, am I going to get charged per person? Oh, no. Oh, no, 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 no. no, no. It's the same okay. whether it's one person or whether it's 20 people. Okay. So. All right. Okay, I'll help her then? Yes. yes. I know I feel bad. Yes. She wants to live with me so bad, but they won't let her go. Mm. She's their meal ticket. 
Oh no. Yeah. Oh, no. Well, Eric's saying that you just stay present, you support her, she trusts you, she feels safe with you. And what so would she do without you? Seriously. Yeah. yeah. I know that's what I think about because I'm the only one even her other grandmother don't have nothing to do with her. Oh god. You know, and yeah. the fact is because when she was born, like I said, I had her, my daughter had a drug addiction mm. or whatever, and they never took her. Yes. They never picked her up. And also, the school started. Oh, they want her home right away because of school. Because my daughter don't want to get in trouble. Oh, you know, okay. So, and I all right. Well, everybody me. who's listening and we will pray. Yes. What's her first yes. name? Gianna. Gianna. Oh, okay. Yes, I know who you are now. Yes. All right. Yes. And we'll send healing too. Yes. We'll we'll send healing for sure. Mm -hmm. Good. Thank you guys so much. You yeah. best. Oh, thank welcome. you. And thank you for being such an awesome person for Gianna, you know? Gosh. Yeah. Yeah. I wish I had had somebody like that growing up. Jesus. Yes. Yeah. Oh my God. All right. Uh, all right. Let's I gotta go let my the... dog in. Okay. <laughs> seven on, seven. Lady. I had to do that. Seven seven five area code. Hi there. How you doing? Hello. Hey. Hey. Um, I'm a long time listener. Hello, Eric, Alisa. Hello. And Michelle. Hello. Hi. Um, Hi. Right now in, in Sunnyvale, California. And um, my mom passed about uh, almost 11 months ago now. Yeah. And she uh, and I have put her mobile home up for sale. And we're about to close. I want to see where Eric sees the. Uh, me living next and what I'll be doing for work. What do you think, Eric? Uh, what where she what city she's gonna live in next? Yeah, where she's gonna live. Where are you now? Sunnyvale, California. What? Sunnyvale, California. Sunnyvale, California. Really? So, Eric, where is, they're going to sell the mobile home. Where should she then move, and what kind of career right. does she have? It doesn't feel like um, yeah. <laughs> you're going to be moving too far from where you are. Um, now, Eric says there's other opportunities that will come if you choose to go down that road that you could move out of state. But what he's saying is that from where you are right now, it looks like you're going to be staying in the state. And what he's showing me is something that you're interacting with people. He's actually bringing up some volunteer work that could lead to some paid work oh. for you. Um, and uh, he's giving me like that. He's showing me like a hot plate on a wheel, which is meals on wheels. Yeah. Right. Like, yeah. like bringing yeah. food, help, helping other people, like bringing food to people that are on their own, elderly, sick, yeah. anything else like that. Um, he said to start to look, um, start to look for ads, um, like through wanted ads on the internet. Uh, it might come up as, like an agency looking for some assistance, but he says, if it says volunteer, he goes, still look into it because there's like, there's a job through it. There'll be yeah. a job. Awesome. I'm, I'm getting elderly care too. I am like, Good. uh, you know, retirement home or nursing home or, or something along those lines. So. All right. So you, you got your marching orders, girl. Thanks for calling. <laughs> okay. Thanks. You're so welcome. All right, we have somebody from the 949 area code. That's way out west, probably. Hi there, how you doing? Uh, Amy. Hi. Hi. Amy from Huntington Beach. Amy from Huntington Beach. Um, yeah. I um, wanted to see if Eric or uh, anyone um, has any suggestions on... Um, like, what do I do about my money issues? Like, what can I do to increase your to increase your financial abundance, or how to invest it? Or yes, it's been a while, so I'm just trying to figure out how to if I need a new job or. Okay, so you're trying to figure out how to increase your financial abundance, right? 
Yeah. Okay. Please. Amy from Huntington Beach. What do you think, Eric? Well, Eric's saying the mindset of how she looks at money. Um, she, it, it's a almost like an unconscious but built-in mindset belief that there's lack, um, uh, which is a misconception. You know, uh, there there is no lack, and that it's it's okay. She deserves. She deserves to live a happy, abundant life. Mm. There's absolutely nothing. She's not taking away from anybody else, and you you deserve it. Eric is saying. So, wanna like one thing is to change your perception of how you look at money, how you relate to money. Um, he's saying that you know that a job in a job opportunity could be coming up with more money. Uh, he's also saying too, though, to remember that your joy and your passion, um, or to like not to take a job just because of the extra money and then hate going to work every day. Cause that's mm -hmm. not going to bring about abundance in no. any way. You know, it's about, uh, passion and joy and, and living as if you already have it. Oh yeah, that, that's you know, abundance is infinite. Scarcity is a complete illusion. Yeah. I know in, in yeah. this beauty world, it doesn't seem like it, but it truly is. And yeah, we just have to live life as though yeah. we know that basically. Like like Eric's telling her, visualize yourself with the money, what you want to spend it on. Like like really feel like you already have it. Well, what that's is how manifestation steps? works. What concrete step does she need to make? To find that job that well, is also a passion. It, Eric, is, Eric is showing a, a couple things that he was saying is, um, for one, when anything that you're doing um, to bring in more income, as he says, go to the why. And that doesn't mean why, because I want to increase my bank account, but is there freedom because I want more freedom mm. because I want to experience. Mm. So he says, go to that. But one thing he's showing me for you is um, also passive income. He says to start to look into uh, ways that, cause he's talking like, um, like more bang, more bang for your buck, like um, mm -hmm. having less hours, more money. He says, start to look into like affiliate marketing or something, some way that you can, create something and allow a, that to to make some money on its own he said do a little research and i think you may have already looked into something like that because he's saying that there's like some things that you've looked at and not really gone deeper into so start to look at um things that you can create and sell and, and i'll just give you a quick example like you can is something he was showing me is you can create things online like um it's like a publish and print so you can make sayings on cards you can um yeah like all sorts your, of things yeah. your creation and then put it out there and then it, it prints when people buys it and it sends like a percentage to you so there's all these different things that you can invest in great idea it will not yeah, take from your hours yeah. because eric says let's not build more stress on top of you right uh, right. Right. Okay. right that sounds great thank you amy thank, thank you, you. Yeah. For calling, thanks. Amy. I got high hopes for Amy. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, I I want to ask this woman Maria T King wants to know who is her divine team. Maria T King. I and she's I I she's got two archangels there. She's got Archangel Michael, <laughs> and I'm getting Archangel Metatron as oh. well. Um, and a lot of, she's got her guides, um, and a lot, a lot of angels. Like I just, just saw like the golden lights, like how I see the beings of lights. Nice. But she does have, um, and, and Eric too. Eric's just saying, don't forget about me. Oh, like, Eric. You know, he's, yeah. Yeah. Well, thank of you for course. that. Of course. All right. So um, let me take somebody from the 813 area code. Hi there. How you doing? Hello. Hi. This is uh, Casey from Brooksville, Florida. Casey? 
Yes, from Brooksville, Florida. Brooksville, Florida. How are you doing, Eric? And everything? We're doing hey. good for you. Yes. <laughs> excellent, excellent. I just have a, a, a quick question to ask Eric. Um, about a couple years ago, um, I was remembering uh, an event that happened when I was about four, three or four. Anyways, a long story short, I fell in the pool and ended up um, at the bottom of it. Oh. My question is, did I did I uh, drown or did I really don't? Oh man, time like stopped for that minute. Yeah, I was at the bottom, and then my dad drove in some time later, and I kind of come to, you know. Um, did she die and have a near death experience, time. Eric? Yeah. I I I'm getting that. Um, uh, it was that in between state. Um, that that it, he could have gone either way, but he his he way. he was yeah he was saved in time. So, I mean, it's it's as close to death as you want to come, but I don't why? feel like he died. Yeah. Why, um, why did why did she or he go? I don't know, Casey. Um. To make him question. Yeah. Yeah. Why? Yeah. 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 To. To have him start asking those those questions, um, like why are we here and what can happen and how quickly it can be taken, and uh, your your poor dad that must have really scared the shit out of him, Eric. <laughs> um, but yeah, I don't know if you get any different, Michelle. But well, it, he's just adding a little bit on there. So you your soul originates from the planet Neptune, and there's a lot of water. Oh. A lot of water around you. And Eric says that you're a communicator. And this is about communication. And you remembering that and even speaking that right now is to help you connect to the divine part of you. Because what he's saying is that um, this is a liken to a near-death experience. And he says that yeah. many of us actually have them. And we do go back and speak to guides. And he says, but we don't all cross. We don't all yeah. go right back and stay. Right. Interesting. This, this experience is for you. And he says, now go into meditation and ask to speak to your guides that were present with you at that time. And he says, because you are a natural communicator. So he says, get ready for things to crank up. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Well, we're Great. glad you're alive, Casey. Yes. Yes. Thanks for calling. <laughs> All right. Somebody from the 479 area code. 479 area code. Hi there. How you doing? Rita here. Hey, Rita. Where are you calling from? 90 seconds. Uh, Fort Smith, Arkansas. Oh, Fort Smith. What you got for us? I have been having some sales that are very disconcerting and I don't I've had some health issues in the past and I don't know if this is the scalar stuff working on me or if I'm having a emotional breakdown is it spiritual is it emotional is it physical I've had physical things go on too I've had strokes and near death mm. experiences oh gosh too. Wondering, I had one today. I had one two days ago, and it, they're scary. I don't know what's going on. Are they just emotional feeling things? Like, is that no? It feels like it starts on the left side of my body, and it feels like I become devoid of life. It, mm. And like I'm a zombie or a robot. Well, first of all, you need to make sure you check with your healthcare practitioner but yeah. we only have yeah. 25 seconds left so eric give you know you might have to call back in but eric what give us um, answer. yeah eric says that she needs to go to her doctor and okay. go and get looked at and just get um Ten get her blood seconds. blood pressure checked okay check the blood pressure yes um there is other stuff going on too spiritually but oh. just just get yes. yourself checked out and call back i don't think that was enough yeah call back. Yeah. yeah. All right. Thank you guys. And thank you guys for joining the show. Please look at the description box below for Helena and Michelle's information. They're awesome. I love you all. I love you, Michelle. I love you, Helena. Love you and I love you. Love you, Elisa. Love, love, love you, everybody. Bye. Bye. Thanks, Bye. everybody. Bye. Eric says, love you, everybody. Oh, yeah. <laughs> love you, mom.